Hello and welcome to Cataclysm Quick Tip number 69 where we're going to discuss base wiring and appliances. So there's been some fairly major changes in the experimental branch regarding how to wire up a base with electricity. In the past we used the vehicle system where we would start a new vehicle construction, lay down frames where needed, and then install onto those frames the various appliances that we would like to use, whether they were lights, stereos, welding machines, etc. But we had to use the vehicle system in order to accomplish that. That's no longer necessary. We now have wiring that's built into certain walls, and we also have appliances that we can place in lieu of using the vehicle system. So all of the devices we used to put on the vehicle to use, we can now just place directly as an appliance. So there's a few things we need to talk about in regards to this to kind of clarify things for folks and make this system a little easier to understand. So we're going to talk about appliances and we're going to talk about wiring and the electric city. So for appliances, if you open up the construction menu for your character, you can see that we've got a number of options. We're going to type in the word place. That's kind of the key word for this. This is how you place down an appliance. And it's a fairly extensive list. All the things we used to use in the vehicles is represented here at this point. We've got stereo systems, mini fridges, chemistry labs, welding rigs, etc. Solar panels, batteries, standing lamps, floodlights. It's all, it's all in here. And all you need is the base item. So if I wanted to place a large battery for power storage, I would just need to have a large storage battery nearby or in my inventory. Electronics one and no tools necessary. And I would be able to place that in whatever position I'd like. Appliances auto connect to other adjacent appliances. There's nothing needed from you in order to have electricity pass through them. Anything directly adjacent will automatically pass electricity. And there's a menu you can use to view a few different commands depending on the appliance that you're placing. If you just examine the appliance, you'll be able to see the menu and I'll show you that here shortly. Now, in addition, if you do not have adjacent appliances and you need to power to pass through any kind of gaps, you have a couple of options. Walls now have wiring. Not every wall will have wiring built in. If we go back to the construction menu and this time we'll type in wiring, You'll see we have two options. Reveal wall wirings when lit up means an adjacent wall does have wiring inside. And in order to expose that wiring, you just need fab zero, a tool with cutting of two or more and either pliers or a multi-tool. If we were to select that, you can see here it's showing the three adjacent white wall spaces do have wiring. I pick a direction and we have revealed wall wirings. This allows us to connect into this point, either via an adjacent appliance or via an extension cord of some kind, and we can pass power through the wall. For example, if I had something here and I needed the power in this room, we could pass it through this point. You can remove the connections by using the examine menu, and this is true of most of the appliances. This is how you can take the appliance down, plug it in, connect it to other appliances and so on. So you just examine the appliance you've set up and if you don't want it there anymore, just select take it down and it'll remove that particular appliance, in this case, the wall wiring. Now for comparison, if we come up to this wall, which is a field stone wall and we bring up our wiring options, you'll notice it does not highlight the reveal wall wirings. We have all the requirements. It's just that that wall actually doesn't have any wiring. We do have the option to place wall wiring. So if you have a circumstance where the wiring is not present in the wall by default, you can use this option in addition to the same basic tools and skills, but with also copper wire and duct tape, and you can create wiring. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and give our character here the hammer space mutation that allows them to construct and craft without worrying about pesky things like skills or raw materials or anything like that. We'll bring this back up. We'll say place wall wiring. We pick our direction and we have now created a wall wiring connection point. So you can either reveal wall wiring or place wall wiring if you need it. You can set up appliances. If they're adjacent to each other, they will automatically pass electricity. Now let's talk about some other options. Let's say your appliances are not adjacent. You have a few choices, and I'm going to show you first a little demonstration of uh, an example I've set up here. We're actually hanging out in the kitchen of a mansion. I thought this would make an interesting example to kind of showcase. I'm going to go outside, 
and I have a step ladder set up here. And what I'm positing is that I want to set up a little base area actually in the basement of the kitchen. I'm going to use that as my home base workshop area and we need to get power into there. So what I've done is I've set up some solar panels up on this little ledge right here. I, t I put it up here specifically to protect the solar panels. If I had them on the ground and we had zombie visitors, so the, the zombies might actually d damage or destroy the solar panels. So I figured it'd be smarter to put them up a level. And this was a nice, convenient little ledge up here. So I've placed five solar panels, as you can see here. If I examine, oops, if I examine a solar panel, we have the menu and we've got a number of options. I could take it down, I can plug it in, I can unplug it and so on, or rename it. And the solar panel, as you can see, is generating 16 watts of power. There's five of them up here, so that's what, 50, 30, 80 watts? We have 80 watts of power being generated. They're all adjacent to each other, so they're all sharing power connections. What I've also done is in this first solar panel in the corner here, if you look on the right, you can see it says solar panel, outdoor extension cord, and uh, don't worry about the power cord entries. <laughs> uh, the outdoor extension cord is an inventory item, so we've got a couple of them here. And I'll show the details on it. And note it says an extra long 100 foot or about 30 meters orange extension cord for connecting outdoor appliances. It'll be used on any appliance or other household electrical system. So this allows you to pass information or pass electricity from one point to another. So we're going to use it to pass electricity from this set of solar panels down into the basement. It will operate across Z levels. The thing you have to be careful about is the distance. So this says extra long 100 foot or about 30 meters. What that means is 30 spaces, 30 squares. So as long as we can move within that 30 square limit and connect it to our other frame or electrical appliance, it'll work just fine. So in this case, what I did is I've got it connected to this point. If we go ahead and hop back down, I then walked along here into the kitchen, counting the spaces as I went. We're well within the 30 space limit. I walked down the stairs and then I connected the other end of it right here to this large grid battery. And you can see it says on the right there, large grid battery, and it has an outdoor extension cord. So that's the other end of the extension cord that I connected up to the solar panels. So we have a cord connecting all the way up there on the second floor, down here into the basement, into this large battery. Now, in addition to the battery, you need uh, appliances to actually use the energy. It's always three important things. Power generation, be it solar, be it uh, wind, be it gas generators, whatever you prefer. But you need some kind of power generation. You need power storage. Always have a battery in your circuit somewhere. You can't connect straight from solar panels directly to a light, for example. It just won't work. You always have to have some kind of a battery connection. In addition, you want to store that power. So I've connected the battery and then from the battery, there's a couple of things I want to note. If you examine a appliance, you have an option or several options here. I want to get power to this standing lamp. Now I don't have a wall I can run wiring through and you don't need one. Every appliance has a cord that will allow it to bridge a one space gap. You don't need any special items. You don't need any wall wiring, nothing like that. If there's only a single space gap, as in this example, all you have to do is examine the second item, which is the standing lamp. And you can see here you have unplug, plug, and so on. So I'm gonna unplug this and turn it off. And if I select it, I can say plug in appliance. You'll get a message, attach loose end to vehicle, select that, and then attach to cable to vehicle where, I'm gonna select the battery. So we've now actually attached it and I can just turn the lights on. So I've connected that to that just by examining this and then choosing the plug in option. And that will always work for a one space gap. It can't go any, f <clears throat> excuse me. It can't go any further than that. You can also do it through a doorway. So I can do the same thing from this battery up to this refrigerator. I've set this up as an appliance so I can turn it off, unplug it. Right now it is no connection between these two. So if I select it, you'll see there's nothing under the fridge entry on the right there. But if I select it here, say plug in appliance, attach and pick the battery. It's now plugged in and it's operating and you can see it has a power cord entry to show it's powered. If I close the door, it will maintain the connection just fine. No problems. 
So single space gaps, easy to bridge. Just select the appliance that is not currently connected and then use that option to plug in the appliance. Now for larger gaps, as I already showed, you can use extension cords. You can't see the connection. You just have to remember it and you have to kind of find it via that ex outdoor extension cord option there. Uh, but that'll bridge up to a 30 space distance gap. You could also do a series of wall wiring if you had an appliance where I'm standing, but you wanted to set up an appliance uh, further away. You could either do an extension cord to connect that, or you could do uh, reveal wall wiring all the way to wherever you need to get connected to. But it's generally not necessary. Uh, extension cords are fairly common in the various locations that you can go looting in houses usually, and they will uh, more than adequately take care of it. But using this information, you should be able to set up an electrical system pretty much wherever you want and in whatever manner that you want. But I thought this would be a good example because we're going across multiple Z levels and we're connecting different objects at different points. So the highlights, use the construction menu to place appliances. Appliances will auto connect to adjacent appliances. Examine appliances for a menu of options. Appliances have built in power extension cords that can bridge a one space gap. Wiring or cords are only necessary when trying to bridge larger gaps or if you're trying to pass power through a wall. Use the reveal wiring option to create a power connection point. If that particular type of wall doesn't have wiring, you can use the place wiring instead. And then you can use extension cords and or cables like the jumper cables to bridge larger gaps. Uh, cables and cords have varying lengths that they'll travel of the electricity. You just got to check the details, see what kind of length. And you can also test them by connecting it on one end and then just walking away and counting the spaces. You'll eventually break the limit and you'll get a message in your sidebar telling you that it's disconnected. And that's another way of finding out or knowing. And that should be it. With that information, you should be able to set up a fabulous base design of your own using the electrical system with a minimum of muss or fuss. Uh, I'd like to show a couple of other examples real quick. Uh, let's go to, I guess, uh, let's go back upstairs, actually. And we'll grab this, drag this out of the way. I just want to create a little bit of space along a wall here. All right. So if we bring this back and we go place... Uh, of particular note, I just wanted to mention the power generation. We do have solar listed of the various types. There's wind options. Um, this one here, ASRG, I want to make note of. So the ASRG, if we examine it, is the Compact Advanced Sterling Radioisotope Generator. You can get these in roadblocks, military roadblocks that have the uh, the guns and the uh, spotlights. These are what generate the power for the spotlights that are always uh, shining a light on you. And they're also found in the center of military outposts. There may be a few other places. Those are the two most common places that I remember seeing them in. They're very valuable, very handy. And the reason for that is they actually provide, whoops, wrong option. <laughs> they actually provide 130 watts of power forever. They're nuclear, and they just don't need any kind of fuel, don't need any kind of attention. You just place it, turn it on, get it connected to the rest of your network, and you've got 130 watts of power that you can use uh, forever. Uh, so very handy. Uh, so take advantage of that, and uh, I would recommend you just kind of look through this list. A lot of good stuff on the list that you can do in your own little base. And uh, given the information we've covered, I think you'll be able to set up a fabulous base of your own um, with minimum tools or equipment. Hope you found this information helpful. As always, if you're enjoying the uh, the Counter Club and Quick Tip series, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, drop some comments. If you have any suggestions for future episodes, happy to hear those. I've got a few new ones I'm going to be dropping here in the near future. Looking forward to uh, helping you out in your further adventures in the Cataclysm. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Stay safe out there.